Every day there is a new comic book reader, and when you look at the comic book landscape when it comes to Marvel and DC, it can be a bit overwhelming. So I've come together today with my good friends Joe Corallo and Eric Green, and we're going to talk about the best places if you're looking for DC comics and the characters, where might you want to actually jump in and start reading? There are so many different eras. DC is a little bit easier than Marvel, which we already did before, and that DC... Really, they do crisis events that reboot their universe, and really a lot of things change, and those are clear indications of where you might want to start. We're going to talk about all the major eras that you can jump in on DC Comics. I do want to say thank you very much to comic book editor, writer, Joe Crow. How you doing, Joe? I'm all right. What's how are you? I'm doing great. We've also got the biggest fan I know. He's been reading comic books longer than I've been alive. we got Eric Freed. How you doing, Eric? I'm doing well. Now, there is one era that we'll start off real quick. The pre-crisis DC era goes from 1934 to 1985. It's 50 years. It encompasses the golden age and essentially the silver age of DC comics. There's a lot of stuff going on here, Breen. One of the reasons you can't really jump in at a precise location here is the continuity is really out of whack. They, they would include stuff and then throw it out. And that was essentially across the board with the characters. And until really the early 80s, they didn't take a lot of the characters all that seriously. And they were mostly written for kids. Absolutely. And that's as far as like where to jump in on this, you can just pick a character that interests you. Anywhere you jump in, you don't have to worry about what came before or what came after because there was very little attention paid to continuity until, as you said, the late 70s and the early 80s. Now, if you, if you want to take the characters semi seriously, about 1977 through 85, they, they revived like the Kirby verse and they started, they, a lot of Marvel writers had migrated over to DC, mm -hmm. so they brought some of that style with it. Yeah. Englehart on Justice League, you know, he wrote a great Batman story, Strange Apparition. So there's, mm -hmm. that's a, that's a kind of a, a, you know, a good place. But as far as, you know, if you just want to read just fun stories, you can just grab something and go because you don't really have to worry about anything before or after. If you are interested in the Golden Age, there are trades of the Trinity. You can get you know, volumes one of Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Golden Age, if you want to check that out. If you're interested in the Silver Age uh, incarnations of those characters, in print right now, they reprinted. These are older trades that they've, uh, you know, polished up and put back out. Superman in the 50s, Batman in the 50s, and Wonder Woman in the 50s, to, to give you a taste on that. And uh, to kind of build on some of the other things that, that Breen was saying, if you are interested in characters like The Flash, for example, they've put out, and they're still in print, two of the more classic kind of stories. The Flash of Two Worlds is in a deluxe hardcover edition, if you want to check that out. We've also done a retrospective on that story. And The Death of Iris West is also available in, in a hardcover that reprints that. If you are interested in other Silver Age characters the, the, or books, two books, and we brought this up before in, in different videos, The Legion of Superheroes and Doom Patrol are probably two of the books that were the least like for kids that felt the most like Marvel books in their Silver Age and Bronze Age uh, incarnations. And uh, lastly, uh, obviously, uh, Neil Adams, uh, very important, his work done on Batman, mostly pre-crisis. They have trade paperbacks, so you can enjoy uh, those those classic uh, Neil Adams stories in, in that way as well. So that gets us up to Crisis on Infinite Earths, comes out in 1985. Marv Wolfman, George Prez. It essentially was DC Comics growing up and getting with the program and competing kind of with what Marvel were doing. A tighter take on the continuity. Jeanette Kahn was in charge, essentially, of DC Comics at the time. Marvel Comics essentially has the greatest run in comic book history going on at the time. But DC really isn't all that far behind, especially if you're a Batman fan. Right after Crisis on Infinite Earths, we do get Dark Knight Returns, Batman Year One, The Killing Joke, Death in the Family, all happening within the span of a few years. You also get John Byrne coming in on Man of Steel and really revolutionizing Superman, taking that character a little bit more seriously. We get George Perez's Wonder Woman, the greatest Wonder Woman run of all times. We also get a nice event called Legends, talking about some of the, the uh, villains within the DC Comics universe, and perhaps the greatest comic book story ever told, Watchmen, depends on who you want to talk to. If you're a fan of DC Comics characters and you don't want to go back to the silly era of like Silver and, 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 uh, and Golden Age DC, you need to start here, because this is really where they reestablished the characters, they took the parts from the past that they wanted to reuse, 
but they really aged up the characters. Nothing is a better example than Man of Steel by John Byrne, which really reinvigorated the character moving forward. I would recommend starting with the Crisis series. You may not understand it. I'm not sure that Marv Wolfman understood it as he was writing it. <laughs> but what it does, it, 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 it's basically a, a house cleaning. And when it was over, you know, John Byrne takes over Superman, completely you know, redesigns him for this era. You know, Wonder Woman, same thing. Now, when they did the crisis, they basically said they left Batman, Green Lantern, and the Teen Titans primarily alone. And they just kind of like just eased into the, you know, pretty much intact. But most of the rest of the heroes, like Green Arrow was completely changed with longbow hunters. For those first five years or so, and I'm glad you mentioned Legends. I absolutely love that miniseries. Man of Steel Legends. I mean, it. I can't tell you guys how cool it was to go into the shop every week and seeing new issues of this stuff as it was just happening. In those first five or so years of DC post-crisis, if Marvel owned the first half of the 80s, and they did, and we've talked about that a lot, DC, not sales-wise, because unfortunately there's nothing they were ever able to do, owned the second half creatively because they were pretty much firing on all cylinders with very few, if any, missteps. It's a great era to read DC. A lot of people will tell you that's the best era that DC Comics has ever had, and it's hard to, to argue with it when you see the results. Now let's jump up to the next kind of big crisis that resets the DC Comics and really changes a lot of what they're doing. 1994, we get Zero Hour, A Crisis in Time, Dan Jurgens, Jerry Ordway, and what's cool about this one, uh, Joe, is that really they start replacing some of the main heroes with their sidekicks. They kind of start stepping yeah. up. We get Mark Wade's Flash run featuring Wally West. We get Ron Mars' Green Lantern run featuring Kyle Rayner. We get wow. basically the revitalization of the Justice League with JLA by Grant Morrison. But we also get Chuck Dixon's Batman work with a lot of the Batman characters and the Batman himself. We get the Long Halloween, Amazing Story, Dark Victory, the sequel to that, Mad Love, Batman, Harley Quinn, so we get some of the animated stuff start coming into the DC Comics universe around that time. Kingdom Come, one of the really interesting Elseworld uh -huh. stories you ever get. The last great Legion of Superheroes run, and we also get Starman and JSA series that are absolutely fantastic. The Starman uh, from James Robinson is one of my uh, favorite things from the 90s. Uh, there's a compendium out of the first half of that book. And I believe there that the second compendium's on the way. Batman wise, you know, I think it's important, you know, bringing up people like Chuck Dixon, but Doug Menk and Kelly Jones on, on Batman. I, I, I really love that stuff. Again, it's like a dark twisted kind of Batman, but there's really good stuff going on. And that leads into No Man's Land. Um, so yeah, th this era is just full of stuff. And uh, of course, not just the, the JLA with, um, you know Grant Morrison, but you also have uh, the Tower of Babel storyline, which has been adapted as an animated series. It's also done by Mark Wade, um, which is another great jumping on point if you're interested in JLA in that era, and maybe you don't want to start from the beginning and just collect all the Grant Morrison stuff. Like I said, they they elevated a lot of their characters that were you know side characters at the time, and it really worked. They showed that you can do mantle swaps. But you kind of have to get rid of the, the main hero permanently and, and let the other character ascend and just take the, over the mantle. Obviously, we did get you know Barry Allen return as the Flash and Hal Jordan returning as Green Lantern. But you know this era proves that you can do it if you put your mind to it and you put the right creators on it. When these were originally done, Barry was never supposed to come back because he had the quintessential comic book death. You couldn't ask for a more heroic send-off. Wally was the flash of an entire generation of readers. And I, I don't mean a comic book generation, which they say is three years. I'm talking about a legitimate generation, 20. Yeah. Kyle Rayner was Green Lantern for years. Rumor has it that Zero Hour was designed to clean up Hawkman's continuity. And one story that I can't gloss over, because it might have been my favorite event of that era, was Final Night. Basically, the sun has been, ex the sun eater has basically extinguished the sun and the earth is just slowly freezing to death. Lex Luthor's brought in to try to save the save the world, and he tries because, you know, there's no earth to rule if, I mean, there's nothing to rule if it's not there. And it gives Hal kind of a redemption, because at the time they hadn't retconned the whole 
parallax thing where he was a, a an infect something that had infested Hal's mind. So when he basically helps reignite the sun and saves the day, but those the individual issues that crossed and all the crossovers, I swear to God, you'd read those books and you got cold because <laughs> each week the temperatures got progressively colder in the story and it just it was very well done. It doesn't nearly get the credit I think it should. Very true. So that's one of the weird things about DC is they they reset their continuity, they have a plan, they execute it for two years, and then things just start going off in different directions and things get unruly. So they have another crisis event, and we got one in 2011 called Flashpoint. After that, we got the new 52. This was the Dan Didio idea. This was all his braid child. Flashpoint itself is somewhat contentious. I think the new 52 just overall is controversial. I don't think a lot of people like the takes on the characters here, Joe. These are non-traditional takes on the heroes. They try to update all of them. Some of them work. A lot of them didn't. For me personally, the way I look at the new 52 is you got to find the writers that were able to work within the system and make it work well. Scott Snyder, certainly with his Batman run, his Swamp Thing work, very good during the new 52. Jeff Johns definitely made Justice League, Green Lantern, and Aquaman work. Grant Morrison was doing some really cool stuff, specifically Multiversity. And then we had Jeff Lemire coming in with Animal Man. Yeah. But but the new 52 is, is tough. But if you want non-traditional takes on the characters, this is going to be your era. Yeah, um, I mean, Jeff Lemire's career in mainstream comics was basically launched with um, Animal Man and his take on that. But that was, you know, it was like a cult hit over at Vertigo. But this this really got everything to blow up. It really got eyes on, on Jeff Lemire. There are people that dig uh, Grant Morrison's action comics run. I, I thought it was one of the better things that went on during the New 52 um, you know, there, there are problems uh, throughout it, but um, they had solid art. Um, I think was it Rags Morales was the artist on that book. You know, if you're interested in a character like Wonder Woman, but you're maybe a little hesitant because you don't like some of the mythology, you're like, oh, it's corny that, you know, she's made of clay and all this stuff. It's like this might be a modern take that you might be easier for you to, to get into. So, Breed, as an avid comic book reader, you've been through dc uh crisis on infinite earth you've been through zero hour you make it to flashpoint you get into the new 52 as somebody who was used to you know maybe some uh, some silver age takes some bronze age stuff did you like the new 52 what could you find out that was good about it I, i'm not gonna lie new 52 is what drove me out of dc <laughs> now a lot of I, people say that now but i want to say that i may have been a little bit too quick to pass judgments because yeah, like justice league for example what they tried to do when they first did this new 52 was the comic equivalent of shock and awe not only isn't your father's you know characters they're not even your your slightly older brother's character like green lantern was ryan reynolds from the movie oh. and there's a scene where he goes in oh this superman oh, i'll just go in there and then the next thing you, know, you see him flying out because superman's belted him into next week it, it, it like tried to. It kind of reminded me of like the early issues of Ultimate Spider-Man when Uncle Ben had a ponytail and was growing pot on his windowsill. They were, it, 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 but once they kind of settled in, there are some good stories to be had in that era. A lot of the things they they reintroduced, like I Vampire, Men Men of War, things like that. And I know there's an All Star Western, other yes. than All Star Western that they gave thirty something issues to. They got cold feet and pulled the plug on a lot of the chances they took after only eight issues or so. And all of a sudden, the 52 starts shrinking, and then they start adding other stuff. But And then it just basically turned into DC business as usual. But then it's like, okay, but if they've kind of gone back to the way things have always been, we want our old characters back. And I think that <laughs> leads into your next topic. If you like Jeff Johns and you think Jeff Johns is a guy you can trust, you're going to love this last installment we get DC Universe Rebirth in 2016. Jeff Johns is the chief creative officer at DC Comics this time. Dan Didio has been kind of pushed to the side, and this is the Jeff Johns show, and he decides he wants to return the DC Comics heroes to their best states, period. Whether it's you know, Silver Age, Bronze Age, uh, Golden Age, let's find the best versions of the characters. Let's bring them all into one comic book universe that kind of makes sense, and we get another, another reset called Rebirth. Post-Crisis is the best era of DC Comics, but I think DC Rebirth is kind of right after that. The reason it's not as good as the others is because it's very short. It's maybe 18, 
perhaps 24 months if you want to be generous with it before they kind of really go off the tracks and abandon all of it. But if you're a Superman fan, this is the best time to be a Superman fan in comic books. You get a fantastic Superman comic from, from Peter J. Tomasi. Action Comics from Dan Jurgens is fantastic. And you get uh, Super Sons with John Kent and Damian Wayne, also by Peter Tomasi. Great artists like Jorge Jimenez, Patrick Gleason. Some really good stuff happening on Superman. Not the biggest fan of what's happening on Batman and, and, um, and Detective Comics, but there's enough great Batman out there. This is a great time for Green Lantern fans. Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern Corps by Robert Venditti is fantastic. We had a really good Flash run featuring Barry Allen from Josh Williamson. We also get a really cool Titans run, but there's also Teen Titans, which I think caused a little bit of confusion. But there's a lot of really, really good takes on the characters, Green. I know you were a big fan. I think you came back for a bit when it felt like they were going all in on the characters. Yeah, I, I went from zero to 15 to 20 titles a month again. The Superman, that was the best we'd gotten since Burn, Stern, Wolfman. As much as I love the first decade of the 2000s with DC, one character that I thought they just continuously screwed up was Superman. It was as close to him being that guy again, plus adding the, the element of him being a, a husband and a father, both. It was, it was great stuff. It, it, both those books were tremendous. I said the two issues where they go on the family vacation is as good as anything I've read in 15 years. And, and yeah, I said the Titans series, I loved. Wasn't a huge mm -hmm. fan of the Teen Titans by then because all of my Teen Titans were now Titans. What was going on in one book? You cared enough to you wanted to read more. You wanted to get yeah, I wanted to get back into this universe. And apparently Dan DeDia said, No, you don't. That's the crazy thing, Joe. Is there's so many really good takes on the characters. The the rebirth era doesn't last long. It comes in and the big thing that you're promised with this is that we're gonna incorporate the Watchmen universe into DC Comics with Doomsday Clock. Jeff Johns was gonna introduce Dr. Manhattan in the Watchmen universe, and it was gonna culminate essentially in the three Jokers story. Doomsday Clock gets just delayed upon delayed upon delayed. And by the time it even gets close to, to the end of that thing, we've had Dark Knight's Metal, which kind of ends the DC Rebirth era. We have Heroes in Crisis, which essentially destroys Wally West, who was the symbol of hope in DC Rebirth. And it kind of really just, it ends right there. But if you want an, an era that's really great, but you have to know that there's an end point to it, Joe, I think this is absolutely a perfect place. Yeah, this is this is a a, a really great uh, spot. Again, the the Superman action comics, Super Sons, all all of that's fantastic. Um, if you are interested in the like extended Bat family, which I know a lot of people are, James Tynan's run on yeah. Detective Comics is all about the extended family and guest stars Batman. You know, going back to Venditti, uh, Hawkman, that was a highlight for a lot of people. But yeah, overall, I, I think Justice League was a, a little weak during this time overall. And there were some other books that I wish were a little stronger, like Wonder Woman. But but overall, it's a really it's a, a very solid era. A lot of people like the Green Arrow that's in there at the time. I think Ben mm -hmm. Percy writes that one. There yeah. are some strong Nightwing stories. I don't think Nightwing itself is particularly strong the whole time, but there's definitely some highlights in there. Mm -hmm. So. A lot of just really great stuff to unearth during DC Rebirth. But the, the problem is, is that it's only like 18 to 24 months, kind of depending on the character before they really start veering off. But yeah. according to us, those are the best places to really start your DC Comics journey. You can go to pre-crisis, but the characters really aren't uh, you know fluid throughout. You, it's, you can jump into a story, but you don't have to read anything before or after. It's, it's kind of the wild, wild west with DC Obviously, Crisis on Infinite Earth changes everything, resets the continuity. Everything gets uh, very much tighter. Probably the best age of DC Comics. You can go to Zero Hour, Flashpoint, or the New 52 Rebirth, and those are some pretty great places uh, to start with DC Comics. If you have any other questions, definitely tell us in the comments section. We'll definitely be reading those, and obviously other views, viewers will as well. If you want to get into DC Comics, Joe or Breen, do you have anything else to say? Um, I, I would just add, um, in, in terms of people who also enjoy Aquaman, they did start collecting a little while back, the Peter David run. I think there's only a couple trades or so out, but that's, if you're interested in that, like, you know, post-crisis 90s, you really like Peter David, you, you saw the cartoon in the 90s where he has the, you know, uh, harpoon hand, like, all, all, or the, 
it, you know, that, that hand, it's definitely uh, worth checking out. And um, I, I also feel an obligation, because if I don't say it, Breen might say it, is those six years of Batman before Crisis, the continuity is really tight. Jerry Conway, Doug Mank, back to back, uh, doing that very tight continuity between Batman and Detective Comics. Definitely also worth checking out is Jack Kirby's uh, New God Saga, the whole fourth world saga is, um, you know, again, if you're a Jack Kirby fan, uh, it, it is pre-crisis, but it's it's got all, it's, you wish it went a little longer because he didn't quite get to finish his story, but it is fantastic. The, those five, six years of Batman with Conway and Mank writing, the special events like year one and Dark Knight Returns notwithstanding, I think Batman is the only character that was better the first, the, the last five years before Crisis than the first five years after. Mm -hmm. That's not to take anything away from the first five years after. It's just that those runs were so good from yeah. 80 to 85. Hopefully you found a good place to start with DC Comics. If you want to jump into Marvel Comics, we did a video about Marvel as well, where you can start out. It's a little bit different because Marvel just publishes different than DC Comics. Definitely check this one out if you're also considering jumping in on Marvel Comics as well.